I've seen a bunch of health heart tutorials, right? And most of them show when you take some damage, it'll remove the entire heart at once. But I wanted to showcase how you could do half hearts or even quarter hearts and how to set it up like a Zelda game. So the first place I want to start is our actual heart sprites. So here you'll see I have three different states of a heart. It's full, it's half, and it's empty. And I made this in Photoshop, but you can make this in literally any art program. What I did was start with a 64 by 64 pixel square. I added a heart, I copied it, and then I pasted it three times side by side. And so the dimensions of the three hearts is 192 by 64, so that you can fit, you know, three images in. And then I would just basically like select the box tool and fill in this part white, kind of like that. And so I just made three separate things. You can find these online, do whatever you want. I then imported it and I changed the sprite mode from single to multiple. I hit apply and open the sprite editor. And then I went to slice the type. I went to grid by cell size and I did 64 by 64. And then I hit slice and you see I got three squares right here. So this turns it into three different sprites. I can then expand the heart sprite in my assets folder, and you'll see we now can reference these three individual sprites. So once you set that up, if you have a canvas, you want to right click on this, otherwise you can just right click in your hierarchy anywhere and go down to UI, and then I selected image, and when you do that it'll just create like a white square like this, and so I positioned it somewhere towards the top of the screen, you know, and then I made the width somewhat bigger, like 500. And so this background here eventually can be invisible. This is basically just going to be the background bar of your health, right? So when we run the game, the hearts will basically be displayed on this. And so I use this square as kind of just like a marker of where it's going to be positioned. When I run the game, you see it creates the hearts up here. And then whenever you feel like it's in a good spot, you can literally just disable the image component on this game object. And this is going to act as our parent. So I called this health hearts. And then I attached a grid layout group and I actually left everything defaulted. And the grid layout group just enables it so that our hearts will display in an orderly fashion. Okay, so with the image disabled and the grid layout group enabled, I also created an additional script. I called it health heart bar, but you could call this like health heart manager or health system or heart system, whatever you want. Name it something relevant. And this script's gonna be responsible for actually drawing the hearts on the screen. For now, just create an empty script and put it on here. Okay, and then on this game object in the canvas, I'm gonna right click and go to UI and go to image again. This time I'll just call it heart. And so for the image, this time we can actually pick one of our heart icons. It doesn't really matter which one at this point. I'll just do the full one. And then I'm going to add a layout element component. This works together with our grid layout group that's on our parent object. And I'm gonna leave this to default settings as well. So I can duplicate some of these and you'll see that they actually seem like pretty spaced out as defaulted. If they don't, this is where you can actually play with some of these settings, like the spacing on this grid layout group. Maybe you want them to be 20 apart. Um, I think that's a little too much. I think it already looks better without that. But this is where you can play and make it look however you want, depending on what sprite assets you're using. I'm gonna get rid of those additional hearts. And then I'm going to make a health heart script and I'm going to attach it here. Ignore the contents. We're gonna go through it from scratch in two seconds. So speaking of the health heart script, let's go ahead and actually open that up. So I have this health heart script here, it's a mono behavior, and I cleared it out. And so every single heart in my game is gonna have three separate sprites, full, half, and empty. So the first thing I wanna do is capture these three different images. So I'll say public sprite, and then we'll create a full heart, half heart, and empty heart sprite. Okay, so these are gonna be three different sprites we can pass in. And then we want to have a reference to our image component on our heart UI game object. So we need a reference to our image, but in order to use an image, we need it at the top of our script to say using unity engine.ui. With that statement, we can now make a variable to an image type, and I'll just call this heart image. And then I'm going to, in the awake method, actually fetch our image component. So I'll say heart image equals get component of type image, and we'll be good there. And then since we have three different states of our heart, right? We have three sprites, we have three states. I actually wanna make an enumeration so that we can reference this. And so you can do this in the same file or in a new file. I'm just gonna do it at the bottom of the script here. So below my health heart class, outside of it, I'm going to say public enum and call this heart status. And we'll say in here, empty equals zero, half equals one, and full equals two. 
And by assigning numbers here, we could later do something where we say like heart status next to, I don't know, two. And it will actually convert this statement right here into the full heart status. But I'll show you that in a minute. So now we have this enum that's outside of our class. And now going back to our health heart, the last thing we wanna do is create a method to set our image based on what our status is. So I'll say public void set heart image. We'll take in a heart status variable. And then there's a multitude of ways to do this, but since I only have three and I'm only ever going to have three in my game, I'm just gonna use a switch statement. So I'll say switch status and then case heart status dot empty. What we wanna do is set the heart image dot sprite equal to the empty heart sprite. And then we break in the case that the heart status is half. Well, then we wanna set the heart image sprite to the half heart and also break. And the case where the heart status is full, well, guess what? We set the heart image dot sprite to the full heart. And we also break. Right, so this makes sense. We're just seeing what our status is and setting the appropriate sprite. And that's it, just a couple variables, two methods, and an enum. So going back to our heart game object, we now have this health heart script that takes three sprites. And so like I said before, if we expand this hearts sprite, we have one, two, three. We just wanna pass these in. So I could say zero is gonna be the full sprite, hearts one is gonna be the half sprite, and hearts two is gonna be the empty heart. And then I can just click and drag this heart into our prefabs folder. And I'm going to delete it from my scene because we now have a heart that's all wired up. All right, so with the heart done, we can now focus on that parent object, which is gonna manage all of our hearts. So on my health hearts game object, I have a health heart bar component, which is a dumb name. I'm so sorry. The first thing we need is a reference to that heart prefab. So I'll say public game object heart prefab. We know for sure we need that. And then we know for sure we also need a reference to our player health values. I have a player health script. You do not need to copy mine. The key things I wanna demonstrate here is I have two float values, health and max health. It doesn't matter how you're storing these values. It doesn't matter where you're getting them from. It doesn't matter if you're not even using player health. In our health heart bar script, what we really need is a reference to two floats, right? health and max health. But since I already have them on my player health component, I'm just gonna say public player health. And this is making a direct coupling to my player health script. I'm fine with it for my demo. And then the last thing we're gonna need here is a list of our health heart components so that we can update the status of each individual heart. But to do that, we'll say list of health heart. I'll call this hearts and then I'll initialize it to a new list. Okay, so then we need to make three distinct methods. And the first one I wanna do is to clear all of our hearts. And so to do that, we'll say public void clear hearts. And here we say for each transform t in transform, we want to destroy t.gameObject. And then at the end, we'll say hearts equals new list of health hearts. And so this is going to remove and so this will destroy all the heart game objects underneath our parent here in the canvas. And then we're just clearing the list so that we're starting fresh. Okay, so that's how you clear. We then wanna be able to create a heart. And when I create a heart, I want it to actually start empty. And so I'll say public void create empty heart. And this is where we wanna instantiate our heart prefab. So I'll make a reference to that and say game object new heart is equal to instantiate heart prefab. And after we instantiate this new heart, what we wanna do is set this game object to its parent. To do that, what we do is say new heart dot transform dot set parent to transform. We then wanna get our health heart component. So I'll say health heart heart component is equal to the new heart dot get component of type health heart. I'm saying heart way too much this video. It's driving me crazy. And then we'll say heart component dot set heart image to the heart status dot empty. So it'll start out empty every time, no matter what. And then I'll say hearts dot add the heart component. Okay, so we're instantiating a prefab, setting the transform parent, and then we're basically just telling the component on that heart prefab to be empty so that the sprite updates to empty and we're adding it to our list so we can track it. Okay, so these are two utility methods. And now we're ready to make our final method, which is actually going to draw out all of our hearts. And once we have this working, we're pretty much done. And so I'm gonna make a new method and say public void draw hearts. And this one's a little bit tricky 
Because let's say my health is eight, then that means we need to draw four hearts, right? Because every single heart could be half or it could be full and it could also be empty. And so the first thing I wanna do here is clear hearts. We wanna start with a fresh canvas, right? So there's not gonna be any hearts created at all. And then after we do that, what we want to do is determine how many hearts to make total. And this is going to be based off the max health, right? Not our current health. And so to do this, what we need to do is get the remainder. And I'll explain this afterwards, but I'll say float max health remainder is equal to player health dot max health. And then I'll say the percent sign two. And so we're really checking here to see if our max health is odd or even. And if there is a remainder here, we just want to add it on to how many hearts we need to make. So after this, I'll make an integer and say hearts to make, say equal to, and then I'll say player health dot max health divided by two plus the remainder. And it will complain because we need to cast this as an integer. So let's say our max health was nine. You would do eight divided by two and get a remainder of one. So the remainder would be one. And then in here, we would do eight divided by two, you'd get four, and then you'd add on one. And so we would know to make five hearts. If that doesn't make sense to you, just trust me, it works. Okay, so we can now say four int i equals zero. i is less than hearts to make, i plus plus, and we'll say create empty heart. And so this will make all of our hearts. And at this point, we can actually test this out. So on this health hearts game object, we need to pass in our prefab for our heart, which is what we made before. So I'll pass that in. And then I just need to drag in my player for the player health script. But again, use whatever you have set up in your project to access those health values. And so right now my max health is set to eight. So if back in our health heart bar, if I say draw hearts in our start method, right? And my max health is set to eight, when we run the game, we should expect four hearts to be made. If I set the max health to nine, and I run it, then five hearts should be made. If I set it to three, because we only have three health, well then we should expect two hearts to be made. And so this is working correctly for what I want. Okay, so now that we're actually creating all the hearts we're going to need, right now they're still empty, right? So the only thing left to do is to go through our existing hearts and update them accordingly to where we have health. And this is actually a little tricky. It took me a little bit to figure out, but what we want to do is say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the hearts dot count, then i plus plus. So at this point, we're not looking at our health. We're just looking at how many hearts we've created. And so this loop is basically going through each heart, and then we just need to tell it what's the status of every single heart. And to do that, what we can say is int heart status remainder is equal to mathf.clamp, and then we want to do our player health dot current health value, right? So this is going to be our current health. So as we take damage, this is the value we're looking at. We'll subtract i times two. This is going to be some crazy math if you're not used to it. And then we want to set the minimum to zero and the maximum to two. Why zero and two? Because if you remember on our heart status, our minimum is going to be empty, which is zero, and our maximum is full, which is two. So if you had more in this enum because you're doing quarters, right? So you had like four statuses or five statuses, uh, you wouldn't set two here, you would set the maximum to four and you'd be multiplying by four as well. Okay, and this is just complaining because we need to cast it as an integer. And so this is a crazy math thing here, but all we're trying to do is determine what is the heart status. You can trust me that this works. I'll show you in a second, but from this point, what we could say is hearts at the i index dot set heart image. And like I was telling you before, we can say heart status remainder, and it's gonna complain because we need to cast this as a heart status enum. And there we go. And so now if I set my max health and health to eight, right, then we get four filled hearts. If I set our health to five and our max health to eight, well, then we have two and a half hearts which is what we expect, right? Because that's two, four, and then half is five. So we know it's working correctly. The last thing I'll show is I have in my player health script, a public static event with an action delegate called on player damaged. I have this take damage function here, and you could ignore everything but these two lines where I basically say health minus equals amount. And then I'm just saying on player damaged question mark dot invoke. So these are the only two really important lines. 
on my scarecrow object, I have this damage on collision script where I'm just saying if we collide with the player in on collision enter 2D, then tell the player health to take damage of amount one. Right, so you're just taking one damage every time you collide with the scarecrow, simple stuff. So in this health heart bar, we can make a reference to the on enable function. And in on enable, I could say player health dot on player damaged plus equals draw hearts. So I'm subscribing to the on player damaged event. And then on disable, we just want to unsubscribe because that's good practice to unsubscribe for events when the component's disabled so you don't have any lingering things. So every time my player's health changes, basically, I'm going to be firing this event. And every time this event gets fired, well, we're just gonna redraw all of our hearts. And so now with that event set up, I can collide with my scarecrow and take one damage. And every time I do, my health's going to decrease half a heart at a time. So if this helped you, please like the video, comment if you're having any troubles, I'm happy to help you. And last thing is, if you want more tutorials like this, then make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.